Okay, still on the southwest coast of Iceland where the plate boundary comes ashore here on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Um, I just did a video about 200 yards or so up against these cliffs here looking at some uh, volcanic features in those bedded uh, lapilli tufts, bomb sags, those sorts of things. Um, and over here on these cliffs we can see we have uh, similar layers. This is actually a different tuff cone, so a different eruptive event and location. And, and in contrast to the one across the, the bay, we can see that these are capped by lava flows. These lava flows, uh, I believe, are 800 to 1200 years old. I'll have to check the, the resource on that. Um, and so those are capping these older bedded lapilli tufts down here. Uh, but the real star of the show is something I'm standing on. And so it doesn't look like much, um, but if we trace this up, we can see that what we have here is a beautiful dike. So this is a conduit of magma working its way through these bedded lapilli tufts. And this specific type of dike is even more exciting because this is what's known as a feeder dike. This dike was feeding, at least in part, the lava flow up above, the basaltic lava flow. So this dike goes right into that lava flow and feeds into that. Presumably there might have been other uh, vents as well. And remember, this dike would go back into the hillsides some unknown distance. Uh, but this is just a beautiful example of a feeder dike, the conduit of magma that rose to the Earth's surface, carrying uh, the lava up towards the surface. So let's take a look at this thing up close. I think there's a few interesting features that you might predict. So if we think about, let's back up a bit here. Uh, if we think about this dike, we would expect it to be hot magma working its way towards the surface. But the sides or the walls of this dike, and this dike's only maybe two feet thick, um, would be cooling, right? So we've got cooling happening on either side of the dike um, as it's in contact with these older uh, tufts on each side. And so we'd expect it if it's cooling more rapidly that it would maybe have a finer grain size to it, right? The grains would be, the crystals would be a little bit smaller than in the middle. Uh, so we can see if that's true, we'll go up and look at that. We also might predict that the heat of the lava adjacent to these lapilli tufts might actually cause some welding of these tufts. These tufts are pretty crumbly. You can go up and, and rake them with your hands and they just sort of fall apart. But I think you can already start to see here that there's not only a color change, especially on this side, um, but that the, the tuff sticks out a little bit. It's actually a little bit more resistant. So let's, let's head up and see how those predictions pan out. And this is like the worst. So we've got rounded, slippery boulders on the beach and then nasty angular ones in the talus here. This was not fun to get over here, but we made it. Um, okay, let's step right onto it here. Here we go. Um, right, so let's start out here. So here's actually the contact between the dike and the tuff, and again, the tuff out here is, wow, like calling this rock is really generous, right? Like you can just take this thing and crumble it. And in here, it's definitely more resistant. It's still a little crumbly, but I can definitely feel a difference between this material over here, which you can just rake away with your hands, and this material here, which is much more resistant. So uh, the interpretation would be that the heat of the ascending lava has actually baked and consolidated some of the tuff uh, that it's adjacent to. Um, the other prediction we have was, was the crystal size. So if we look closely here along the wall of the dike, we can see that it's pretty fine grain. I'm not seeing a lot of crystals here. This was cooling quickly, giving us a smaller crystal size. And as we work our way into the interior of the dike, we see two things that are pretty apparent. One is that we're starting to see crystals now. So these little white specks of plagioclase. Um, it looks like there's a few little green crystals of olivine in there, but the point is that they're noticeable. You can actually see 
these crystals. Some of them are at least a millimeter or more in size. The other interesting thing is that this zone here in the middle has more vesicles in it, more of these gas bubbles in the middle as well. Uh, so apparently the quenching over here did not allow the gases uh, to expand, but in the interior, they were able to expand as they're moving towards the surface and encountering lower pressure. If we move over to the opposite side of the dike, we can see same sort of thing, right? Here's the dike material here. Um, so I need to adjust the camera. And then here's the wall rock. And actually here, there's actually a rind, which is really interesting. Um, a nice hardened, this is super hard here. That would make a great climbing hold. Nice hardened rind up against it. And then over here we can see the lapilli tuff, right? The grains of bedded pyroclastic material. Um, really just exceptional. Um, these things are just super, super cool, these, these dikes. And this particular one's a feeder dike. A lot of dikes we see in geology um, maybe ascended towards the surface, but never made it to the surface. Or else if they did, we can't see where they connected with their surface uh, eruptive feature. And so really kind of cool to see uh, this feeder dike here on the coast in Iceland. Um, and shout out to, I'll maybe put it in the, the notes there, the folks that put together the field guide that helped me find this thing, GSA field guide to the area. So I'm just, I'm following in the footsteps of other, other people that have done some of this work. So. Pretty awesome. Uh, hope you're enjoying this. Uh, remember you can donate to the, the expeditions and the travels and the future development of videos, but a great little feeder dike cutting through the Lapilli Tuff, feeding into a basalt flow here on the Southwest coast of Iceland in the North Atlantic.